Hello and welcome to this episode of the Worship Band Builder Podcast, where we are working with you to lay the foundation for skillful worship. I'm Eric Roberts, and I'm joined by my co-host, Emily Roberts. Hello, all. Hello to you. Today, I have a couple promos, uh, some news, a list of gear that I want you guys to have, and then we're going to be talking about vocals. So before I do that, here's the thing. Right now, all the worship leaders in the country over the last couple months have heard themselves singing on the live stream and they've been more like (laughs) horrified, okay? So that's the kind of thing I see out there in the worship leader comments like, oh my goodness, what Like not everybody. I mean, if you're not that person, then you're just sitting there like, "Uh uh-huh, I got it. I nailed it. But uh, there are a lot of you who are like listening back like, oh my goodness, it's terrifying as a vocalist. It's probably as terrifying or more terrifying even than when you're in recording, if you've ever recorded in the studio and the engineer's soul is your vocal line to listen. Ooh, so that's, That can be brutal. That's brutal. <laughs> this is even more brutal because um, you're actually doing this live and then you can't change it. And then everybody in the world, it's on Facebook. All your friends, all your and high school buddies. And it stays out there. Yeah, it's out there. All your high school friends can listen to it. I mean... <laughs> You know, I'm kind of used to it being a YouTuber for a while. You know, I'm like, I'm on there doing stuff. I've kind of got over what people think about me or if I mess up on YouTube, I'm like, eh. But I can control YouTube. You cannot necessarily control your Facebook's live stream from your church, right? I I don't know. You know, you can you can decide on YouTube, do I want to upload this or do I want to, you know. Oh, when you start doing live oh. stuff, it's a lot different because you yes. can't really. Okay, there we go. Also, you can't control much of what the guy's doing in the sound booth. So if he messes up your vocal or whatever, and a lot of mm. worship leaders don't pay attention a lot. Maybe they don't know what's, what's going on. They're just up there. I'm going to sing. Then they go home and listen, and they're like, you know, crying in a fetal position <laughs> for the next two hours every every week. Okay. <laughs> okay, but there are some things that you can do to avoid that sort of scenario. Yeah, So, and, and we're going to do that. So right now, we're going to do the promo. First of all, donate to worshipthekingcom You can become a partner monthly, yearly. You can also just share this video. If you want to support the ministry here, and you can go on Amazon, buy a songbook. It's like $12, and then leave a five-star review. That's a really great way for you to uh, sow into the ministry financially, but also get something out of it, like get a songbook. Uh, on Amazon, and that just helps our rank rankings go up on Amazon, and mm-hmm. Amazon sees that and they push it out there. And so I do not write the songbooks, but I want to tell you what I love about the songbooks. Since yes, since I didn't write them, I feel like I can you, say you this. You helped, but yeah. Yeah, well, it's mostly you. Okay, you're right. So what I want to say about the songbooks is that the chords are right, and they are in the right places. And they have been simplified for easy but still good sounding playing. Yeah, they're. I know there have got to be better words for that than what I just used. Personally done over and over again. We go over and over them over and over, and we have our some of our my assistant chord chart guys will go do them, and then I'll sit there and do them. We move the we move the chord to the exact syllable in the word that you're going to strum on. And we put little chord slashes on there so you know how many rhythms down to do, okay? So, yeah, it's and they're, they're, uh, in the early days, I'm talking like 20 years ago, because we've been pr- publishing songbooks now for almost 20 years. The, there might have been some errors in there, but we've always kind of prided our songbooks on these are easy and they're accurate. Because if you go on there and you type on Google and you get the free charts some here and there, they can be a disaster. They're not even, chords are not even right, and then beginners... They're like, well, I don't know what's going on. I'm like, well, you're not, you're playing a totally wrong chord. So thank you for saying that. That's yeah. that's what we worked on. Now, there are a lot of resources in this modern day where publishers of the actual songs, the singers of the songs, are putting out their own chord charts. So it's getting better. But our songbooks are also good because you can throw them in your uh, book book bag. And if you show up and they say, you need to lead worship, you can just grab it and be like, no problem. I got three songs <laughs> I can do. Or the guitar case, maybe. Or the guitar case, yeah. Probably not your back pocket. They're not pocket size. No. So, so that's good. So get a songbook. The big news is coming up, okay? Worship Leader Foundations is coming October, November. I'm going to be putting links out in the next week through email, so don't worry, you'll get them. October, November 2020 is going to be nine weeks of live webinars, live sessions, exclusive webinars, podcasts, all based on 
the, the idea that you are going to try to lead a successful, thriving worship ministry, even if you just got thrown the keys to the church and they said, you're the worship leader, these are serious things. These are, these are things for real serious dudes mm-hmm. and, and dudettes, <laughs> okay? And they're also things for like really beginners, like what do I do? If you follow these, that's what Foundations has always been about. If you follow these really foundational things, then you don't get into trouble because there's, and we're going to talk about this in the vocal session today. So check that out uh, in the links and just be uh, aware. If you're not on our email list, join Worship the King free and you'll be on our list. And the last list today, we're going to be talking about vocals. I have a page now on the website, worshipbandbuilder.com slash gear. It is links to all the gear that I'm talking about. So we're rolling through a lot of gear in these episodes lately, and I'm um, testing out a lot of gear, doing a lot of YouTube videos. All of it is linked on that page, and I'm updating it every week. So if I mention some new gear in an episode, it goes on that on that page. Links straight to Amazon. And yes, some of them, some of them, most of them are affiliate links. So if you want to support the channel, click on the link and buy the gear. If you're going to buy it anyway, buy it right through that affiliate link. Amazing. Here's the intro. You ready? All right. You let's read do the it. intro. I've been talking the a intro. lot. The intro. Can I read this? Yes. I don't can, know where. Can, the intro well, to this episode. Here we go. Everyone wants to sound amazing on the stage and now on the live stream. The audio we are creating right now every week can be awesome or it can haunt you on the Facebook live replay. <laughs> It can really mess with your mind to hear yourself back on the live stream. If you follow some simple steps, you can improve the whole production and recording quality of your voice. Very, very well written, I might. If I Thank might you. So. Thank you. Performed. And very well read. <laughs> she did that just like I would have done. All right, this is supposed to be a short episode, so let's, be- let's go right through it. Warm up every day. Now, this is stuff that these first few are things that apply to not just sounding good on the live stream, but also sounding good in person. If you don't sound good in person, there's not much the sound person can do to fix that. Yeah, this is this is better vocals on the live stream, better vocals overall, but you got to warm up every day. So she does this every day. So important. I'm not as good at it, but if I don't warm up, I feel terrible and I can't sing right. And there's this weird moment in my voice where I know it's not right. This is not going to be a good day. And if I go warm up, it's like I can kind of, it's like, you know, when you start your car, if you live in the cold weather and it just doesn't sound right until it warms up, that's, that's it. Warm up. Okay. If you need resources, check our website. And especially because so many of the songs now are doing this jump the octave thing. You can't just, you can't just throw your voice into that, you know, you hurt um, yourself, and then you sound weird the whole day. Well, and, you know, you again, you you have performed that and recorded it, and your congregation is hearing that. Yeah, that's the, the real point. Everybody hears all this. So that's number one. Number two, <laughs> we're going to go through these. Pick the key that you can easily sing in the morning. Yes, because you're performing in the morning and your voice is not the same when you first wake up as it is uh, mid-afternoon, let's say. Tuesday night at rehearsal, you're nailing it, you're feeling great, 6.30 in the morning, it's a totally, I mean, it's a whole different world. I warm up at night the night before, if I'm doing an early session in the morning, I warm up a lot the night before. That helps because your voice sort of, mine, mine does, it stays warm throughout the night, sort of. Uh, I have not tried that, but I'm taking your word if on you, that one. Yeah, if you're singing on a if you if you sing Saturday night and you really sing well and warm up, not like go to Saturday night and do like a big jam session where you're blowing your voice out. I'm talking about just warming up and singing Saturday. Sunday, your voice is like, oh yeah, I remember. I was I was partially warm anyway. Mm-hmm. So, but you have to pick keys for the songs that will be good for you. We already talked about some of this in other episodes. You don't have to sing the key of the actual record. No. In fact, I never do. And you nobody shouldn't if it's not the key that suits your voice. Right. I'm a baritone. I'm not going to sing a Chris Tomlin song in his key. So that brings me to pick the right songs for your vocal style. And we were talking about this the other day, like American Idol. If yeah. It, yeah. Song choice makes or breaks those contestants, and, and that's a good 
um, example of that. Um, You've seen it. You know when even they're a good singer and they're singing a song, you're like, eh, it's kind of stinky. And then they come back out the next week or the next night or even that same night and they blow it away and it's like, oh, that was that was right for them. It happens to us as worship leaders too. We were talking about this way back, Shout to the Lord. I, that was a great song, but I never liked leading it when I was younger. I just never felt like it was the right song for me. And so I didn't lead it a lot, even though it was like the most popular song of the, you know, Well, decade. even you can still have that song in your set list, but you have to delegate. Give that song to someone whose voice it does suit. Right. So if you have like your backup singer, your co-worship leader, your wife, your husband. For example. That, yeah. For example, I would just be like, you're singing Shout to the Lord. And she's like, cool. I don't know <laughs> if that happened, but... I don't, I don't know that we really did that one a lot, but uh, here's a, anyway. Here's something that's a little, we're just going to throw this in here. If you are the worship leader, you have three other vocalists on your team, it would help you to know their vocal style and their vocal range so that you can help pick songs. When I'm yes, leading worship... Yes, and put them in their best light too. Yeah, when I'm leading worship, I text the girls that are singing with me that week or the guys and I say... What is your what is your key for blessed be your name? If they're singing it, I don't just pick a key and show up, and I wait for them to tell me. Oh, I do that in D. Now I'm a, I'm just a volunteer, uh, fill in worship leader, so I don't know everybody really well. And we're kind of new, so I just ask them. If you know, and if you're a, a staff worship leader or you're the main worship leader, I would just put up a thing and say we're going to get together. You're going to write down your keys for these songs. That way, your planning would be expedited. But in general, look, you just need to know. They need to know. It's their choice, too. It's their choice. I'm the worship leader, but it is her choice. If she's going to lead it, what's, what key it is in. And I know not everybody's like that, but that should be your... That's that's more for the worship leader foundations. We're going to get deep yes. into these issues in, the, in that foundations. Pick a microphone. This is another one. That works for your voice. Okay? Now, Emily's not a big audio microphone person. She would probably most of her life just show up and grab the mic that they hand her. But this is getting more serious, okay? This is live now on Facebook. This makes a difference. And we worked with our worship leader for a couple months before we found, I found the mic. I'm like, this is the mic. I pulled it out. It was always good for me. So I didn't think it would be great for him because he's a tenor, but we used it and was like, dude, that's awesome. And it just felt right. Now he's got a different mic. He's got now the Shure SM7B. I saw on the live stream last week. That's a great mic. So I'm going to go through a couple of these mics. First now, of all. What, I want to say, first of all, that while I don't know a lot about gear, I do know when I sound good through a microphone. Um, yeah, that's and, what I was going to put, in, I put so, this in here. Yeah, work on it and work on it until you feel like you sound awesome. If you feel like you sound awesome... Like, okay, so you don't know about mics, but there have been times you've been on stage where you're like, you know, this just does not sound right. Great. Like, this yes. mic is crap, basically. Yes, to for be, me. To be it, blunt. And we, we have learned that um, different mics work better on different voices. So that, that is for sure the case. So when we travel or we sing, I take my own mic. I'm like the snobby little mic guy. Like, here, use this one. And it's not, it's it's weird because nobody, not a lot of people do that, but when you know this mic sounds good on you, you just take it and you're like, I'm gonna sing When you hear this. the difference between microphones, you will understand that that is worth the extra time to, you know, pack your own mic and, and bring it. Plus, it's extremely gross to sing into a microphone. It is. It's a little it, yucky. It, in my younger days, I don't think I ever paid any attention to that. Now, I am, like, super grossed out. If you're like, here, lead worship. Here's the mic. And they just take it from the pastor and give it to you. I'm all over that mic, you know. Yeah. I'm like, well, so, like brushing your teeth with somebody else's toothbrush. Yeah, so I'll go through this. <laughs> I don't do that Okay, either. it may not be that bad. It's it. No, it's bad, especially when they stink and stuff. <laughs> You're supposed to wash those mics out, by the way. You're supposed to, you can take the things out. I just would not, I just, whenever I lead worship at our church now, I take my own mic and I take it away. I don't want people touching it. It's just the way I am. You can be that way. I give you permission. So sure, SM7B is the really popular microphone. It's, it's a podcaster microphone, but now if you watch any YouTube video of any of these big worship videos, everybody's using them. So they're kind of, in my opinion, they're kind of like the popular thing. 
They do work very well. Uh, they are four hundred dollars. Okay, that's quite a bit. Mm. Now we use in our podcast the Shure SM57, which is a guitar microphone. It is ninety nine dollars, and you can put a, a pop screen on it, and it becomes an SM7B. Basically, they sound the same. Okay, for a hundred bucks. So the SM57 is not a vocal mic. The vocal mic of all vocal mics, okay, if you're just like, this is kind of like a lot of numbers and letters and I'm not sure what the heck he's talking about. Sure, SM58 is the vocal mic of all vocal mics. You know, you probably can't go wrong with that one. And Maddie has a Sure SM58 beta. It's like a little nicer. It's about She's an alto. She an sings alto. at our church. You, If you are involved with our Bible study, you saw her a couple of weeks ago, and you heard her lovely voice singing yeah. with us. So I asked one of the guys when we were trying to fix uh, Robbie's mic months ago in the live stream, like, what mic should we use? And I'm pulling different mics out of my arsenal of mics, and... You know, we found one, but he said, just 58, dude. That's the one. That's going to be the one. And he's right. If you use a 58 on pretty much anybody, you know, Jim Gaffigan, all the all the comedians I've been watching recently, I've noticed, they have 58s. They're okay. just using 58. So it's very, very good. But not necessarily the best mic for everybody. I go a little bit. Mine's the, the Heil P35. So all these are on the list, okay? But Eric is a baritone. Robbie is a tenor. Um, so I guess we could say that the the 58 is the best general purpose microphone. If you are, yeah, if you just have to buy microphones and put them on the stage and hope that they work for everyone. And they're going to work really that good. That would be the one yeah. to choose. The Shure SM58, they're $100 a piece. They're going to work extremely well. Okay. And that's affordable. And it's very affordable. But then for you, since you're the worship leader and most likely a diva, you're going to go a little <laughs> further. <laughs> you're singing leading every week. I'm just teasing you guys. Uh, you're going to go a little further and maybe start experimenting with your mic. So you might have a, a different mic. And that's just your own personal preference. And I think you should just mess with it until you find one that you love. And then it's really important for the live stream. But that, all the ones you're recommending are on your list. Yep, and then the uh, using a pop filter. So this is the probably the worst part about when we started our live stream several, you know, five months ago. The the mics we were using were not great mics. They were just okay, and they the pop filters on them were were worse. They just a lot of pff, pff. every time they did a P, it was like puffing through the the live stream. So that's the most annoying. The pop was not being filtered. The pop was not filtered, <laughs> and it was annoying. So I I I uh, that was when I went to them and said, let's try this, let's try this. I got these goofy little pop filters for when we weren't live, when we were just doing live feeds, we weren't doing people. And we, they were like little- people? like People? Well, you know, when people weren't in the audience, there was a time during the shutdown when it was just like a studio, we were recording our music in the- You're talking about a church. Yeah, I'm talking about a church. I thought we were still talking about the podcast. You are talking no. about our- um, yeah, geez, I hope they, they weren't that confused too. So when we were setting up our services early in the lockdown, we were doing live streaming for the first time. The microphones were real poppy. So I got some like real studio microphone pop filters and they worked, but they looked goofy. They wouldn't work for like when you have an audience out there. They just were right in front of their face and stuff. But you can use... Bulbous. Yeah, they were bulbous. It's a good <laughs> word to use in a podcast. <laughs> so this is... Uh, I, I'm not going to show you any today. I have a bunch of videos on YouTube where I show you all the mics and the pop filters. Check them out. But I, you, you can just use any kind of pop filter over the mic. And some mics, like the SM7B, have a big old pop filter on them. But they look cool. They're the coolest you can look with a big old giant pop filter. Okay. Last, I'm going to do one more thing. So you get a mic that sounds good on your voice. You make sure it's got good pop filter or it's not getting what they call plosives, not getting all those P's like popping through. B's, T's. B's and T's, T's. Everything just sounds real puffy. Uh, you know what that, so then we're gonna talk about effects. Use effects, EQ, compression, and reverb are your three big ones, okay? So just make, and you're maybe not necessarily gonna do this yourself, but you're gonna make sure that you have a nice EQ because when you sing in a mic and you sound muffly, it's because there's too much, there's not enough, um, high end, there's too much low end, it's muffly. You know, it's like, you can just basically be like, that's muffly, it sounds muffly, I sound muddy. And when you do that, uh, then 
you know, it's it's bad. All you got to do is EQ it. So that's first EQ. Compression is good. It's a little more advanced, but it will even out your voice on the live stream. It's very important. And then reverb is extreme on the live stream is the only thing. If you had to pick one, just pick. Even if you have a junky mic, put a bunch of reverb on it because then you sound like you're in a big room and it sounds good. So if you listen to a live stream mix and you are listening to it and it sounds really dry and just like terrible, it's most likely that you have a dry mix, which means there's no verb on it, okay? So use verb, use a room mic, and if this stuff is something you're really interested in, if you're listening to this podcast and you're thinking, yeah, yeah, I wanna do this, you can join Audio Foundations, I teach everything about this eq compression reverb room mics mixing editing you know doing your live stream mix i'm showing you what we're doing on our on our mix i'm going back through weeks where we've mixed and i'm critiquing our mixes my own mixes that i was doing on live stream i'm critiquing them for you and showing you how it's getting better every week and that is it spend time on your vocal sound spend time on the whole picture until you sound awesome. Now that sounds weird, but... Well, until you sound your best. Until you sound awesome and feel comfortable. If every week you're listening and like, eh, it's a little muffly. Okay, let's re let's EQ it. You listen to it again, you're like, oh, I sound like I'm just, it's really raw and dry. It doesn't sound, sounds dead. It doesn't have any life. Get some reverb in there, you know? Uh, change mics. If you hear a bunch of pop filter, poppy noises, change the mic or put a pop filter on it. You know, these these are things that are gonna take time. And unfortunately, since we went into COVID and lockdown and everybody started live streaming with almost no experience, these things will work themselves out over the course of several months or several weeks, however obsessed you are. And But no matter what, it takes time to keep running that live stream and keep listening back and going, oh my goodness, I need to warm up. Oh my goodness, that song sounds terrible. Why would I sing that song in that key? Why was I singing so high that week? Adjust, adjust until you feel comfortable. So listen critically and constantly make changes. Adjust according to what you're hearing. Absolutely, adjust, change, listen. Um, if you're not listening to your live stream, then shame on you. You have to be listening. Go back and listen to your live stream. It's your performance, which you uh, made everybody in your congregation listen to. So I feel like you should be listening to it too and going, yeah, that sounds kind of weird. What, what's, what's wrong with that? That's critical listening and crit be, be your biggest critic because you don't want them going, well, this, this guy doesn't know how to do anything. He doesn't sound good. Or what's wrong with the live stream? It doesn't work. Or they sound funny. I mean, this is the best moment in history for the church because in terms of getting better audio wise, because you have to record yourself and put it out there every week. We've been forced into a position of... Yeah, and I know it hurts. I know it's it's hard, but um, it's got to be a challenge for you to get a hold of. You can get there is what I'm saying. You can get there. It might take you a couple more weeks, but every single week you get a little better. And having us here... Emily, myself, Worship Band Builder, all the YouTube videos, having YouTube. I mean, when I was a kid, when I was young, we didn't have YouTube. We didn't have this stuff like to just go on there and how do you EQ a mic? I mean, you don't, how do I, What? what's the best vocal mic for vocals? You type in some stuff and stay up all night and just watch YouTube videos. <laughs> That's some good advice, yeah, right? Every, every, every morning you wake up and you're a little bit smarter and you're a little bit closer to the excellence that you're trying to get to. And... Uh, I would like to just make sure I invite you to join me in October, November for Worship Leader Foundations. It's not going to be all this techie stuff, but it's going to be a lot of really great stuff for you to really grow. And uh, also, you, you can also join Worship the King, Worship Band Builder Foundations for audio right now. And it can get you a little bit closer down the road. Any last words, Emily? I think that covers it for today. Yeah, uh, that is it for today. We uh, will see you on the next episode.